Hey guys, welcome to College Talk number 6. This is probably right now my most requested video. So I feel kind of like some pressure on me right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm a, little, a little tense right now. So I'm trying to like, you know, stretch it out. I don't think that's right. This is picking the right college for you. My tips um, and just whatever I can offer you to help you out. I know a lot of you are in high school and you know getting to that point where you're going to have to start applying for colleges and um, I know it's a really big decision. It feels like super important and crazy. It's like what your whole high school career has led up to. I know. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. Basically I'm going to be kind of talking about just some things that you need to be considering when you're making this decision. I hope that I can help you guys out. So. Well, let's just, we'll see. Before I get started though, I'm going to say the same disclaimer, you know, everyone's college experience is different, you can't expect yours to be just like mine, and this is just this stuff that I have to offer you based on my, my own personal um, experiences and thoughts and so on and so forth. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so when you're thinking about colleges, obviously there are a lot of just things that you need to narrow down. So, uh, do you want to go to a four-year university? Do you want to go to community college? Do you want to go to a specialty school? Do you want to do it all online? I mean, there's a lot of things that you need to think about. Once you get that that kind of category, what, what kind of school, just in general, format-wise, I guess you could say, do you want to go to? Do you want to go in-state or out-of-state? Now, something to think about there is if you go out-of-state, there are fees for out-of-state students. So that was something that, you know, I kind of wanted to consider going to this school in Colorado because I really like Colorado. It's really pretty. My family used to uh, go there on vacation for oh, like six summers in a row or something ridiculous like that. And it was really beautiful and I liked it there. But there was, you know, out-of-state fees kind of make a public school that's out-of-state almost as much as a private school in-state. So that's something to think about. And for those of you who don't really know anything about public versus private schools, um, I, I kind of really don't know <laughs> the, the huge difference about them either. The one thing that I do understand from what I've gathered anyway is that a public school is mostly state funded, so they get uh, money from the state. Uh, whereas private schools mainly get their money through tuition, which is why it's so expensive to go to private schools, um, and donations from, you know, people and alumni and that kind of thing. So that's, that's at least what I've gathered, that's like the main difference. Private schools, uh, are, they seem to be more, you know, tight-knit. They're, you know, they're, they're private and they're individual and they're independent, whereas public schools kind of have some sort of link to each other, you know. Um, I go to UC and there's a bunch of UCs, so there's all, the, there, there's the whole UC, like, bond, I guess you could say. So that's, that's something else. I, I mentioned that cost is definitely a difference. Public schools are much less expensive, generally, than private schools, just because of the funding difference. Do you want to go to a large or a small school? That's something to think about as well. Um, and there's always, you know, media size schools as well, but small schools generally um, uh, could be, you know, just a few thousand students, and each class of yours may be just like a high school class, you know, it's a small, uh, more intimate setting, whereas if you go to a large university public school like I do, um, there's tens of thousands of students here, and our uh, my largest class was over 400 students. So, you know, there, that's definitely something to consider. Not saying that you can't have small classes when you get to a large uh, school like I do. I, there are definitely classes that I've taken that are about 30 30 something students, so it is just like a high school classroom. So that's something to think about as well. Not only class size, but just campus size. My school is huge. It's it's gigantic. It's composed of six colleges within the university, um, and each one has its own sort of area of campus. So it's it's huge, and to get from one side to the other, walking is is like 45 minutes. It trust me, I've tried it. It's, it's a long time. Just that's another thing to consider as well when you're thinking about um, what kind of campus you want to go on. As far as how you <laughs> that was weird. As far as how you're gonna fit in, you know, academic wise, can you keep up? That's definitely something to consider as well because getting into the school, you know, that's you know an accomplishment in itself, but it's keeping yourself at a certain standard that's important as well. Um, knowing your place, I think, in the academic world is pretty important. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, shoot for the moon, but um, knowing your limits and having your expectations set at a reasonable place, I think, is something that should just be there. <laughs> um, what I mean is, you know, if you're someone who dreams of going to an Ivy League school, 
um, but you have like a low GPA and your SAT score wasn't that great, it was okay, and uh, your essay skills aren't so fabulous, uh, it, your chances of getting into a place like that, like Yale or whatever, um, aren't as, you know, high as maybe, you know, a regular good old state public school. So it's just, you know, some things to think about. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, strive to go to some place fantastically well known and revered and all that stuff, but, you know, just, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just, you know, know your place. That's all I gotta say about that. Location is something to consider as well, um, as far as neighborhood goes, surrounding neighborhood, um, the safety and the crime rate. I'm not saying you have to like look up statistics or anything, but you can kind of tell, you know, there are some areas in LA that are kind of shady, whereas there are some other areas that, you know, you're okay, but it's just some things to think about. Um, because uh, a lot of you, maybe not all of you, but at some point will most likely live off campus, and you're going to have to be able to, you know, commute from school to home. If you're gonna have to be able, to, or you're the, <laughs> if you're gonna have to take public transportation like the bus system or something like that to get from home to school, uh, the safety and just your comfortableness, comfort is what I was looking for. Uh, with that is important as well. Um, I my school is in a fairly safe neighborhood, but there are most definitely still we get emails from the campus police and stuff about attempted kidnappings and sexual assault and uh, robbery and all that kind of stuff more often than you would expect. I'd say I get a few of those emails every year that I've been at school and it's it doesn't seem scary until you get that kind of alert and the details of what happened and stuff. So just no matter where you are, just make sure that you feel comfortable with it, that you don't, you know, feel like you have to like look over your shoulder everywhere. Also, as far as location goes, um, I think fun things are important as well. You know, my school is located by, you know, a good amount of malls. Um, we have the beaches, and you go downtown, and there's clubs and bars. Not that that's my scene, but if you wanted to do that, you know, it's all there um, within a good, you know, a reasonable distance. You know, I'm not someone who could probably stand living in, like, a farm town or something like that. That just wouldn't really be very good for me. So just knowing what kind of social activities you could possibly engage in outside of campus and stuff is, I think, something that you would want to consider. I'm not saying it should be your number one priority, but it is definitely something that I think everybody kind of keeps an eye out for. Campus visits. So I recommend doing this probably the summer before your senior year of high school. Doing it any earlier, you just kind of don't really pay attention or take in information unless you're super pumped about college when you're younger. I, I definitely wasn't. I went along with a lot of my older brother's college tours. He's two years older than me, so I, it was pretty early on for me to be doing this type of thing. I really didn't do very many tours when I was applying because I had gone with my brother. I was kind of like, eh, you know, I kind of get a good enough idea it's one thing that um, I think everyone should take part in at least going to uh, like two college campuses at least just to get a feel for the differences that there could be and just you know that sort of thing Com campus life and how that kind of feels there are a lot of things to consider and look at when you're taking tours um, usually they kind of go over this with you and they'll take you to certain things that you would want to see um, but lecture halls, dorming, uh, the bathrooms, <laughs> um, dining halls um, that sort of thing, or those are the things that you're going to be frequenting a lot when you get to college, so they're the types of things that you kind of want to check out and see if they are compatible with what you want. Alright, so I believe most people uh, know by April, or around April, if they got in or if they got denied. So that's another time when people start to go touring again. Um, it's more of like a uh, congratulations, you got into our school, um, this is why you should come here. So everyone's all super pumped up and excited and, you know, they're trying to promote the campus and stuff and that's... What was that? <laughs> that's a really fun time to look at these campuses because they're actual, you know, you got in, they're, they're serious, they want you to come to your, their school, it's, it's you know, a very woohoo <laughs> type situation. I don't know where I was going with that. Now, I do want to talk about a couple of regrets that I have. I don't know if I would actually call them regrets. They're more like things that I wish that I had done more of or just, I'll get to them. So, first thing, I wish that, um, mm -hmm. no, 
I wish they had just been more active in the application process. I, I really, when I was applying to colleges, I wasn't very stressed out about them because I really didn't have a whole lot of, of care <laughs> about them. Let's be honest. I just, I knew I was going to get in somewhere and I knew that I would get into a fairly decent school. My GPA was pretty good. My SAT score was pretty good. Um, I had a lot of extracurriculars. I had some leadership in there, volunteering. I had a lot of, you know, some just good stuff in there. I knew that I would be okay. Um, so I didn't invest a whole lot of feeling or passion into this whole process. I was very nonchalant about the whole thing. I wish that I had looked into things more. Now, if you have to consider, though, at this point in time, I, I was a senior in high school. Uh, YouTube was not even a thing for me. I, I, I watched videos, but I, I had not even considered making my own channel at this point. Um, I was kind of on the path of going pre-med, being a science major, um, eventually becoming a doctor. This was kind of where my mindset was. I wasn't passionate about it, but this was kind of where I assumed my life would go. So. With that being said, the colleges that I applied to were all schools where I would most likely be a science major, so there were no kind of any sort of specialty, you know, fashion, beauty, anything at all put into my thought process. Um, and I'm not saying that you're going to know exactly what you want when you're in high school, because that's not true for most of us, but it's something to think about, you know, having the option to do something else is, I think, something to consider. So I wish that I had looked in to other schools a little bit. Um, I, I think that I didn't really care enough to do so. So I think if you're like how I was, just, just be more involved, be more active in your college search because I didn't really look anywhere besides the UCs. I, I mean, I, went, I did apply to SC, but I didn't even finish the application process, I don't think, because I didn't want to go there. Um, my dad just told me to apply, and I, I already knew I wasn't going to go there because I didn't want to, so there's that. I don't want to say that I regret going to the school that I go to because honestly, the way I feel about college, I would regret, or I would not enjoy school no matter what college I would do. I'm not someone who loves to learn. I said this before, I don't love school, I don't love classes, it's just not something that I have ever enjoyed really. So no matter where I go I feel like I kind of would feel that way. So just putting that out there. But as far as my my decision making process went with college was I went to the best school that I got into. And I think that's kind of how a lot of people think about it. I, I you know, your reputation and how other people see you is very important when you're in high school and, and to your parents, you know, they want to be able to tell other people that, you know, my, my daughter's going to blah blah blah, like, wow, you know, it's really good school, blah blah, that's the kind of thing that they want to be able to say and feel and you know, be proud about. But, it's also important to realize that the, the reputation and the prestige of a school's name is not the most important thing once you actually get there. Because honestly, I mean, your undergrad career isn't necessarily the most important thing. Um, a lot of people go to um, grad school and other sorts of situations after undergrad that completely, sh like, you know, make undergrad irrelevant. Sorry, these hand motions are not helping. So I know that at the time it's going to seem like that's the choice that you have to make, but you really need to think about what school really feels like the right fit for you, not necessarily just based on the the best school, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so it's just something to think about. Just because you got into this school that's, you know, really good doesn't mean that you can't go to a school that isn't quite as good if you want to go to that school. And I know that it's kind of hard because your parents or your friends or whoever may have a really big um, impact on your decision, but it's something that you need to take into account yourself and take responsibility for and be like, yo, I want to go to that one, not that one, and just, you know, own it. So that's all I really have to say. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful to you guys. I don't know if I answered any sort of questions or confusion that you may have had, but feel free to leave questions in the comments if you have any um, that I didn't address because I'm sure there was something that I left out. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!